Hello and welcome to another Star Citizen Annex Anonymous. I'm your host, Nikki Backerl D'Angelo. Well, today I'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey, a journey of two ends of how I feel about the current iterations of Star Citizen. When I look at the game, I'm very happy with where they are today. I know it's been seven years. And I know that we're all anxious to be able to play a game that's finished. And that game that's finished may just be Squadron 42. Star Citizen still has a long way to go. Star Citizen is a much more di diverse, dynamic, it's a bigger idea than a AAA single player title. We're building a world for us to exist in, not just a world to play through once or twice or three times like The Witcher. We're trying to build a universe that we could exist in and 10 years from now still be enjoying without there having to be this underlying storyline that we need to complete. We're going to make our own stories in this game. And right now, CIG is building that set. They're laying in all the props for us to use and building cast members to populate the area that we are going to exist in. This is kind of our own little West world. We get to go be who we want to be, do what we want to do, and try to exist within the rules or potentially change the rules that exist inside the game. It's been a long time that I've been doing videos for this game. And I can't believe I keep coming to patches like this one. There's so much good in it, but there's still the same types of bugs. Desyncs, being thrown out of your ship in space, stuck on an elevator, stuck on a train. All those things happened to me here. I played the game for about six, maybe seven and a half hours over the last week, and I was able to complete four missions. And I'd have to say, there were a number of them that I failed to complete because I walked away from the computer and got desynced because I had other things that were pressing at the time. There was one where I was going too fast, and because of one of the things I'm going to be talking about here soon, I ran right into an asteroid that was not... It didn't have a lighting map on it, so it was almost invisible, like the old asteroid hangar was years ago. But yet, I'm not frustrated. I'm not upset. I'm not angry. I'm not disappointed. I just know that this game is going to take a long time to complete. And I don't find myself spending a lot of time in Star Citizen most of the time. I've been in games like Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I've been in games like The Witcher. I've been in games like Satisfactory, like World of Warships, like Kerbal Space Program and X-Plane. I have a very diverse list of games I like to play. And I apologize for my voice coming in and out. That's just the nature of April, May, June in Georgia for me. I really just have a couple of things I want to talk to you about today. And that's why I'm calling this My Two Cents. So here's going to be My Two Cents for Star Citizen this week. And I'm going to start off by saying I am very happy with where the game is right now. But it's going to be very difficult for me to keep playing because of bugs like the one that you're about ready to see. So in my two cents, I'm going to talk about HUDs and I'm going to talk about lighting. Both of those being in the cockpit of the spacecraft that we fly. And there was my bug stuck on a train. <laughs> I'd like to start the conversation about the HUD by saying, yes, I know it's going to be fixed soon. Well, worked on. And thank you to all those that pointed that out. I really appreciate it. I should spend more time reading each and every one of the items that are on the to-do list inside of the roadmap. Anyway, the HUDs today are a great job for an early access game. But as we're moving forward into a world that we could exist in and live in every day, there's certain elements of the HUD that just need to be fixed. The two things I'm talking about today, lighting and the HUD, can show you how when they're combined together, both the deficiencies of each one, it makes it almost impossible to fly your ship in certain situations, 
like here at night trying to land at one of the bases on one of the moons from one of the planets inside of the Stanton system. I think that Zane, who worked on the HUDs in the beginning, did a great job. I think that they really just needed to get something in that worked, and that's where we've been ever since. In reality, a HUD has to do three things. The first thing is it has to provide the utmost situational awareness to the pilot so they can fly safely, attack their targets, land, take off, refuel, or you know, just fly in formation. All of those things are not, at this time, covered inside of the HUD. Things that exist in today's HUDs, where they actually show you flight paths, show you infrared images of obstacles or runways or targets, just don't exist in the world that we live in in Star Citizen. Star Citizen takes place in the 30th century. In the 21st century today, airline pilots currently are fighting with the fact that their aircraft are going to be installed, well, are going to be upgraded to have HUDs very soon. And these HUDs are going to provide an utmost amount of situational awareness. This is an example of one of the HUDs that will be installed in the airliners in the near future. I know that they already have these inside of Airbuses, but these will be coming to all airliners in the future. You can see right here that not only do I have my vertical speed, the ILS path, the heading, the course, my speed in knots, my ground speed, not only do I have my pitch angle and my rotation angle, I have everything I need, but I also see all obstacles in front of me. This gives me the utmost situational awareness to be able to fly a commercial aircraft today. This is the HUD that should be in starships like the Gemini, like the, well, let's just say, like all of the larger ships from the Reclaimer to my Carrick, from my 600 to my Retaliator should all have HUDs like this. This over here shows a HUD that is currently in a video game that's trying to mimic an F-22. This isn't the actual F-22 HUD. This is the HUD within the video game. It gives me a lot of information on the screen, not just my targets, not just what weapon I've selected, how many rounds I have, my ground speed, my air speed, my range to target, my direction that I'm flying in, my altitude. You get the idea. This gives me all the situational awareness I need without having to look down at my instruments. And there are no instruments in Star Citizen. This is more of a general aviation HUD that they're playing with today. Again, lots of information. I can see where I'm going to be touching down on the pavement. I can see my ground speed, my, tr my indicated airspeed, my vertical speed, my heading. I have everything right in front of me and I don't have to look down at my instruments. This is going to make flying GAA aircraft and flying corporate jets much, much safer. And these are all things I hope start to get included in the HUD that they bring us in the future. Because we're flying in space with six degrees of freedom, because we're flying in dark areas, there's a lot of things that I just showed you that I wish we could have inside the HUD of the spaceships that we're flying today in Star Citizen. Direction of our target, velocity of our target, all should be shown inside of the HUD. Flight paths to landing at certain, well, I would say at the more congested spaceports should always be shown. And I think this is a good start for where we need to be in the future. There is one thing that they're never going to be able to do because I don't know how you would do that in a 2D, 3D environment. 2D mean we're looking at it on a screen and we're recreating a 3D environment, but the HUDs in real life are actually focused at infinity. So I could look at anything anywhere and still have the HUD and what I'm looking at in focus. So I think it's pretty amazing that that works in real life, but I don't think that's actually something that's you're able to push forward 
inside a star citizen. We're going to move on to lighting now. Lighting is very important because if the interior of a cockpit is too bright, it's just like driving a car when the lights are on in the car, you can't see out the windows. It starts to distract you from what you could actually see. Star Citizen is a video game. They're trying to ride a line between making something that's truly beautiful and amazing to look at and something that's workable. In this image right here, the, the Terrapin has those two lights at the top of the canopy that are always shining in your eye. They distract you. And then the God rays and the lens flare adds to that. There are certain elements for these cockpits that just need to be corrected. The lighting inside of the cockpits, which are gorgeous and CIG spent hours and hours and hours to build, need to be dimmed. Yes, I know they want to show off the eye candy that they have created for us, but they also have to make the game playable for us. And having two lights staring at us, bright lights below us, above us, around us, inside of our canopies, makes it very difficult for us to see out. They also need to provide us with some kind of sun shield, whether it be a polarized canopy or be a sun visor that goes over our, you know, that is in our helmet. So when we are looking into the sun, we can reduce the glare so we can see the target, see the landing pad, see the rock that we're mining. These are things that we really need to improve our, I, I want to say our experience, and that's the word I'm going to go with, because when I leave my play session with Star Citizen, I'm either going to be frustrated or delighted, and I'd rather be a person that has surprise and delight in my play session than someone that has disappointment. Now, I must like being disappointed because I keep going back and playing the game and having crashes and bugs and things like this to impede the, the love that I have for the game. But it also, I can see the writing on the wall. If they're saying that they're going to fix it, I know they're going to fix it. So these are just some things I wanted to talk to you about today. I think the HUD can be improved. It is great, but it could be better, and there could be a lot more information on it, and it could be a lot less distracting if they could reduce the glow of the different colors that they use for the HUDs. And if they improve the lighting inside our cockpits, we can actually see outside in bad weather, in darkness, in twilight. It'll make the experience of playing Star Citizen so much better. And then we could actually see the gorgeous scenery of all the amazing planets and moons that they created for us. That's all I have for today. If you do like this video, please click that thumbs up button below. Please comment because your comments help me know how much you like or dislike this episode and it would help me better create new episodes for you in the future. And if you are a subscriber, please click the bell-shaped notification icon so you get notified of all my future videos. A big thanks to all my patrons. Without you, I might not be able to do this. And with that said, you all be safe out there, and I will talk to you soon.